my little piggy. Huh? Do you see it? Calm down, Newton. They'll find your piggy for you. Don't worry. Don't you think? Um, yes. Yes, you're right, kids. It is very romantic. But you shouldn't be outside this late at night. So off to bed with you and make it snappy. <laughs> Gazing at the stars? Are you crazy? Why'd you go and say that? Now he'll think we're in love. So, that bothers you? I know plenty of girls who would be honored. Then go gaze at the stars with them. My idea of romantic is take my hand and I'll break yours. Get my drift? <laughs> the invisible network of kids are lovebirds. Yes, I was spot on. I'm sure I got it right. Now, oh, at last, a little weakness that will bring about your demise. Count on me. Lovers, there are lovers having trysts in the park, Mr. Supper. I saw them holding hands. Oh, don't worry, Miss Macbeth. It's all very innocent at their age. Innocent? You must be Joking, love is never innocent. It begins with innocent little cooings, but it soon degenerates. Because when you're in love, Mr. Supper, you listen to your feelings and nothing else, and lose your head. You get up to mischief. Mischief, perhaps, but nothing serious. Strolling at night is not that bad. <laughs> Why not just forget it? <sighs> Supper is a fool. I can't rely on him. Never mind. I'll find a way to nail those brats. Why did you forget my little piggy? You know I can't sleep without my little piggy. Oh, come off it, Newton. Give us a break. Right. I'm sick and tired of you and your sweet little piggy. Can it? <laughs> Today, my children, we are going to study love. Yes, love. This wonderful feeling which draws people to one another. With love, people don't feel all alone in the world anymore. Uh, nothing is more beautiful than two people in love. Their hearts filled with joy, the thoughts turn to fun. They are happy. They sing and dance and laugh. Uh, uh, and when at last they are alone, look at what uh, they do. They go up to their bedroom, lie down on their bed, and then click, kiss, kiss, and tickle, tickle, and then... They wait for the stork to bring them a big slobbering baby. Um, Miss Macbeth, are you sure that's how it happens? What makes you think otherwise, Van? Could it be that you know more than us on the subject of love? Tell us all about it. Uh, Come on, don't be shy. Tell us about what you do with your boyfriend. How you wander about the park at night. How you trick me into swallowing vodka in my sleep. Come on, little brat, own up. Tell me you did it. Uh, that's not where babies come from. She's right, ma'am. That's not how babies are born. True. It isn't the stork. Val, everybody knows that babies are born under cabbages. That's not how it happens. Dirty brats. They're yeah. all against me. I'll have to manage by myself. I don't mind. I'm used to coping alone. I get my hands on those lovers. <laughs> You're the lovebirds. She spotted you. You put ink in danger because of your goofing around. Give me a break. We're not in love. We can kiss the toys goodbye because of you two. Need I remind you that vacation starts next week? And every vacation, Macbeth takes the toys she has confiscated to the incinerator? Hey, mm -hmm. if you're not happy, why don't you just go get them yourself? 
She's right. It's easy for you to criticize us when you just sit on your butt in headquarters. Hm. Hm. You really think they're in love? They're dumb enough to be. <laughs> you think they're in love too? I wouldn't doubt it. It looks fun. Hey, Trixie, what do you say we'd be in love? I'd chase you around, you could scream, and then I could tickle you and... Newton, you're a good guy. You're funny, you have an IQ of 240, and given your body type, you have a good chance of being tall and athletic one day. But until then, you're short. Your face is covered with pimples, and you have a stupid laugh. So please, go find yourself a new little piggy and forget about me. <laughs> hey, Bert! How about falling in love with me? You can lend me your spitball shooter and I can... <laughs> in your dreams, twerp. Twerp. <laughs> 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 hey! How about all of us falling in love? It would be fun! We could play in Tickle Tickle! Hey, can I play with you? Uh, do you mind if I play with you? Come on, I want to play. I... Oh. Butterflies have a secret trick to attract their partner. They give off a special smell, which scientists called pheromones. These pheromones are extremely effective, even in tiny quantities. They cause a state of great excitement in the individual who smells them. Butterflies are not the only animals that use pheromones. Mammals, men among them, are just as sensitive to them. Some scientists even name these smells as the main cause of love. Right, now I know all about love's mysteries. Not to worry, little butterflies. I only need this smell that makes you fall in love. <laughs> I will use them to make my love struck stink bombs. With these, I'll never be alone ever, ever again! <laughs> Maybe we should have told Trixie. It's none of her business. We forgot the toys we're getting them. It's as simple as that. Huh? Hey, Zero, did you see the stars? The stars? What about the stars? <gasps> huh? They're beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They're so beautiful. Guess what? In a moment like this, I feel I could do just about anything. Same here. <sighs> hey, could you jump to that huh? big tree over there? With you? Yeah. <laughs> Did we really jump from up there? Yeah, it was your idea, wasn't it? <sighs> this time I've got you! <sighs> oh. Ms. Macbeth? Sopa, what are you doing here? I'm out for a walk. I'm actually looking for mushrooms. It's the perfect hour of the day, you see. They grow when the moon is out. Oh? But Sadie, what are you doing outside dressed like that? <laughs> <laughs> Come out of there. What in the world made you two jump like that? Don't you realize how dangerous that is? <sighs> Being in love doesn't mean you can do everything you feel like. I'm willing to overlook your behavior once more, but it is the last time, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Off to bed now.
told you, ma'am. Their love struck stink bombs. They make people fall in love. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I just didn't want to be alone anymore. <sighs> so it was you last night running in the park with your girlfriend. No, ma'am. Cross my heart. It wasn't me. Huh? I don't even have a girlfriend. You're telling me that with your little pink bombs there, you don't have a girlfriend? Huh? I want her name, you hear me? We'll stay here all day if need be. All day? In your office? No. In the spider cave. <laughs> <laughs> We could lure Sopper into Macbeth's office as a decoy while we free Newton. Not a bad idea. But how do we lure Sopper into Macbeth's office? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I love you. When I saw you gathering mushrooms yesterday, I thought you were just beautiful. I was the love bird last night. Come quickly to my office and shower me with kisses. Signed, your Sadie. Your Sadie? Miss Macbeth, I have to speak. <laughs> Please understand, I was very moved by the charm of this um, letter, but you and I are colleagues, first and foremost. So I wanted to ask you, Oh, tell me, Sadie, how can it be that you are so pretty? What's he talking about that, Minnie? Oh, I think I understand now. I'd do anything to please you. Tell me what I must do. It's not rocket science, my dear. you just got to be severe. Help me transform this school into a living help you fear. Never ever be nice again. That's right. I'll lay down the law with an iron hand. You command. I'll punish the children who are not obeying. Together we will rule until the end of time. Oh no, that's impossible. I will learn all of my lessons by heart. Well, that's a good start. I'll do whatever it is you say. OK. Punishments are where it's at. Maybe, in fact, love not so bad. We shall. I can be mean and nasty too. Suffer, I have been waiting for you. We shall obey you until the end of time. Until the end of time. Until the end of time. What did you do with your stupid letter? It wasn't us. so long. I've been waiting for you for hours down there. Newton, I'm sorry, but we'll talk about that later. Right now, we have a big problem. Mr. Sopper is in love with Ms. Macbeth. You have any idea what might have happened? Yes, but I'm not going to tell you. Newton, now's not really the time. Yes, it is the time. You left me all alone in the spider cave because you're all in love and you don't care about me. What are you talking about, Newton? No one's in love around here. Yes, you are. You're all in love. I know you are. I saw you. You are. All the time. Everyone is. You kiss each other uh -huh. in the park, in the hallways, in secret, in the cafeteria. But no one kisses me. Never. OK, Newton. You asked for it. Huh? <gasps> <gasps> Yuck. Gross. 
It's like eating cow tongue in the cafeteria. Blah! Oh, don't exaggerate. I swear I'll never kiss anyone ever again. Love is disgusting. <laughs> no, I'll tell you everything. Just don't kiss me again. Promise? <laughs> Babies are delivered by the store. Girls in pink sheets, boys in blue sheets. Good answer, Fred. Good move. Obstacle avoided. Okay, now lead me to the smoke alarm. In just a moment, water will wash away the effects of my love-struck stink bombs, and everyone will stop being in love with the this big bath. Look, there's someone out there on the roof. Uh oh, I think we've been spotted. Don't panic. We're almost there. Continue the operation. I know who they are. They're Vin and Zero. They got up to all sorts of mischief lately. I already caught them strolling in the park in the middle of the night twice. So you're the invisible network of kids. Oh. To make you pay for all the grief you gave me. My sweet Sadie, you mustn't hold it against them. They're in love, that's all. I don't mind love birds, but dearest, as long as they're in love with me. Listen here, bird. I have a mission for you. A little to the left. Yes, that's it. Keep going. <laughs> hey, watch out! Headquarters to Vin and Zero. Answer, that's an I don't know where I'm going! And now who can tell me what the parents do to celebrate this happy event? Me, miss, call on me. Me, I know. The parents kiss each other tenderly? No, Van, the parents don't kiss each other tenderly. They eat the stalk. Oh, Lee Parks, I lost the robot fly! We'll never manage to turn on the sprinkler system now! Don't be so sure. We should be able to turn on the sprinklers from the lavatory. Kilos about 10 babies per voyage? Ms. Macbeth, don't tell me you've been teaching our students this rubbish. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. Look, on the roof, Vin and Zero. about the store. Yes, and without the students, I would have never been able to prove it. That deserves a reward. For all their efforts, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to... Give back all the confiscated toys? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right! Yeah! You see, Trix? We did it. And like Vin would say, Ink saved the world once more. What's the matter? 
Isn't that true? Yeah, finally. And Newton is going to get his sweet little piggy back. Yeah, Newton. Why don't you go thank Macbeth for the kiss? <laughs> Trixie, I have the impression you want to ask a question. Uh, Do you? Y yes Well, go ahead. Don't be shy. What is the scientific explanation of love? Ah, love. It all starts with a moment which we call being love-struck. A mysterious thunderbolt that can strike anyone at any time. Most often when it is least expected. When love strikes, nothing is ever the same again. The heart goes wild, the breathing quickens, the throat tightens, waves of heat overwhelm us. Our body produces substances called hormones that give us intense happiness, excite our desire to please, and push us to do the most outrageous things. Scientists have various theories to explain the effect of being love struck. Some speak of odors or pheromones that suddenly awaken our deepest instincts. Though science helps us to understand certain aspects of behavior, it doesn't explain everything. The magic of love is a prime example. A magic that casts a spell on the soul, unleashes the wildest passions, and reveals our heart's true nature.